please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, help us this day to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. About every nine years, the Episcopal Church elects a new presiding bishop. And these bishops often create a tagline that follows them throughout their nine-year term. When I was growing up, Bishop, Bishop Edmund Browning had a tagline that said, No Outcasts, as we were going through uh, pretty severe arguments about sexuality in the church. Our current presiding bishop, Michael Curry, has taken on the theme of the way of love, and that is the teaching that the way of Jesus is the way of love, which shouldn't be too surprising to us. That probably resonates with a lot of us. He would have gotten a great deal of inspiration and certainly was simpatico with John the Evangelist. And it's John the Evangelist's thought and witness that we hear today in both the gospel and the epistles, the letters from John. And for the next few weeks, we're going to be wandering around in those letters from John a little bit because they are the letters that point us to that way of love. In the letter we hear today, the very first part of the first letter of John, we can get a sense of where John is going and what is important to John. And the first thing that's important to John is life. So that letter starts with talking about receiving the life of God, the life, eternal life, the life that's always been there through Jesus so that we might find joy. He's simply echoing a, another part found in the gospel where Jesus compares the life he has to offer to a well springing up springing up to life with joy, springing up to life to give us what we really desire, to quench our thirsts. And so it's that kind of exuberant, joyful life, that kind of life that rises up in us and gives us what the scripture calls the peace that passes understanding. It's that gift that John is all about, the gift of of life. And the currency for John is the way of love. The way that we give and receive this life is by spending and receiving love. And if we can be believers who live in love, then we will find that life that John is so excited about. John has another theme, and that's that people often turn away from this life for some reason. They seek to find life in other places. They seek to use a different currency. Maybe that currency is uh, wealth or celebrity or power. But these currencies don't lead to the kind of life that John is talking about. These currencies, when we turn to them and depend on them to find life, that's what John would even call sin. It's turning away from true life. There was a great example of this a couple of years ago when Bishop Curry, whose theme is the way of love, preached at the royal wedding of Harry and Meghan, who've also been in the news a bit lately. Perhaps you watched it, but there was a lot of currency going on in that wedding. As, uh, as the show started, and it certainly seemed like a show, you saw all these people dressed up, all these people with these different currencies to try to find some kind of approximation of life. There were the women with the amazing hats. Wow. To see and be seen. 
when the announcers were noticing the wedding, what were they talking about? The celebrities that were there, the famous people with reputation. There were the dignified men with coats with many medals hanging on the side. Even Harry himself was wearing a coat with many medals hanging down on the side. There was the queen being very proper. And the most dressed up and the most proper were the Anglican clergymen. So proud to see them. My brothers, uh-oh, I think they were all brothers, gathered there for that great wedding. But there was one clergyman, our very own Michael Curry, who was the preacher that day. Michael Curry stood up, and he began to preach about love, which seems natural at a wedding, doesn't it? And so he started talking about Meghan and Harry and, and love. And then he really got going, and he began to preach about the way of love and about how the whole world needed to, to, to rest itself in love. He began to speak about the currency of love. And the cameras couldn't help but pan out over the congregation that day. All those people dressed in fine hats and coats with fancy medals to see how they were responding to this explosion of life in the pulpits, preaching about love. Now, perhaps these people didn't spend enough time in church, and I imagine some of them spent too much time in church. Because instead of being enlivened by this preaching, by this promise of the true life that's found when one rests in God's love, there were embarrassed looks from people who spent so much time cultivating their careful image. There was the stoic seriousness of the clergyman who sat right behind Michael Curry. And Michael Curry's exploding with joy, and the stoic clergyman sits quietly and very seriously because that's what one ought to do when one is behaving properly in church. And so there, in that moment, a wedding, which should mostly be about love, people sat wrapped in all those different currencies that they hope, that they trust in, that they count on to bring them some kind of life or value in life. And aside from Harry and Meghan, and some of the singers, and a few of those crazy Americans, maybe even Elton John was there, who, who laughed and who had a sparkle in their eye. For some reason, out of all those people, the thing you wouldn't have said was happening was joy and life. And that's the tragedy for John when he writes to the Christians. The tragedy is, is that they have forgotten, perhaps, the great gift of life. That is what Jesus comes to bring. And they've forgotten the currency of love. So John says, smart man that he is, John says, you know, all of us turn away sometimes. None of us perfectly rests either in trusting that God is the true source of all life or none of us trusts quite enough in that to simply deal in the currency of love. We have our other currencies that we use to somehow try to buy life or receive life. And so John simply says, you know, Nobody is perfect, but we can, when we know, take off the hat, take off the medals, 
take off the vestments, and simply confess that we turn away sometimes. And in doing so, put ourselves back in the grace of God. Put ourselves next to the well that's just seeking to well up with God's life. So John begins this wonderful meditation on the way of love that we'll be hearing about for the next few weeks. He begins this meditation with an invitation to take off those things that we count on to earn life. To confess that the life only comes from a real trust in God. To name those places that we think might lead us to life or that we're habitually trained into thinking will bring us life. To take off those places and name those places so that we might know the life that is the gift from God. I'm really glad that we have a presiding bishop now, Michael Curry, who has called us back to a way of love. And I'm grateful that we have this time together in the next few weeks to think about the way of love and to rest in the life that we have been given, especially in this Easter tide. So I invite you to take a little bit of time this week to think about what is truly life-giving, to think about what hats you're wearing or what medals you're wearing or what celebrity you're seeking and to turn away from those currencies and spend the currency that really matters, the currency of love. Amen.